Hi, so in this video we are going to talk about independent and mutually exclusive events. So as you can see I have already noted down the definition. If two events don't have even a single outcome common, they are called mutually exclusive events. And if two events E and F are such that the probability of occurrence of one is not affected by another, then they are called independent events. So this is the definition part. We are going to understand these definitions by taking one example. So suppose if we toss a coin for three times, then these are going to be the total eight outcomes. And if we define two events A and B, where A is getting a head on the first toss and B is getting a tail on the first toss. And now if we write down the favorable outcomes of event A and event B, event A will have four outcomes where there is a head on the first toss. So head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, tail. These will be the four favorable outcomes to event A. And event B will also have four favorable outcomes where there is tail on the first toss. And they will be tail, head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head and all the three are tails. So these two events are actually mutually exclusive. And how can we say that? If we see these two sets of favorable outcomes of event A and event B, there is actually no common elements. And if we talk about A intersection B in this case, there will be no element in this set. And this will be a null set, right? So these two events A and B are mutually exclusive because there is not even a single outcome which is common to both the events. So this is mutually exclusive events. And now let's talk about the independent event. So to talk about independent events, again I am going to define two events and they will be event E and event F. Event E is defined as getting a head on the first toss and event P is defined as getting a tail on the last toss. So if we talk about the favorable outcomes to these two events, E will have outcomes same as the set A. These will be the four favorable outcomes to event E and if we talk about the cardinal number of E, it will be equal to four. Right. Similarly, if we talk about the favorable outcomes of event F, which is getting a tail on the last toss, we will have these four outcomes in that set. Right. We will have head, head, tail. We will have head, tail, tail. We will have tail, head and tail. And we will also have tail, tail and tail. These will be the four outcomes which are favorable to event F, that is getting a tail on the last toss. And the cardinal number of this set is also equal to four. As you can see, these two events actually have these two outcomes common, this head, head and tail, and this head, tail, tail. These are the two outcomes which are common to both these sets, that means the set E intersection F will actually have these two elements which are head, head and tail and head, tail, tail. These are the two outcomes which have head on the first toss and tail on the last toss. And the cardinal number of this set E intersection F is equal to 2. And now we are going to check whether these two events are independent or not. So to check that, we have to find the conditional probability of event E where F has already occurred and we also have to find the conditional probability of event F where E has already occurred, right? If the conditional probability of event E where F has already occurred is equal to the probability of E and the conditional probability of F where E has already occurred is equal to the probability of event F, then these two events will be called independent events. This means the occurrence of event F actually does not affect the probability of event E and the occurrence of event E does not affect the probability of event F. So if we can prove that probability of E is equal to the probability of E where F has already occurred and the probability of F is equal to the probability of F where E has already occurred, then these two events will be called independent events, right? So 
to prove that we have to calculate these probabilities so let's do that so the probability of e where f has already occurred will be equal to probability of e intersection f divided by the probability of f probability of e intersection f will be equal to the cardinal number of e intersection f that is 2 divided by the cardinal number of the solution space we had total 8 outcomes in the solution space divided by the probability of f that is the favorable outcomes for event f which were 4 divided by the total number of outcomes in the solution space and this will be equal to 2 by 4 that is 1 by 2 and probability of e will be equal to the number of favorable outcomes to event e which is 4 divided by the total number of outcomes which was 8 and this is also equal to 1 by 2 right so in this particular case the probability of e where f has already occurred and the probability of e both are equal both are 1 by 2 so event e is actually independent of event f and now we have to check whether event f is independent of event e or not so to check that we have to calculate the probability of event f where e has already occurred and this will be equal to the probability of e intersection f divided by probability of e probability of e intersection f will be 2 by 8 and the probability of e is 1 by 2 as we have calculated here right and this will be equal to 2 by 8 multiplied by 2 by 1 and this will be equal to 1 by 2 right similarly the probability of f will be equal to 4 by 8 that is 1 by 2 so event e is independent of event f and event f is also independent of event e so from here we can say that event e and event f are independent events right so here we have learned about the mutually exclusive events and independent events and after this we are going to solve few problems based on independent events to strengthen our concepts so keep watching math smart and bye bye till then